Hey everyone, this is Steli FD with Close.io and in today's video we're going to talk about how to deal with the stress of missing your quota and how to take it as an opportunity to grow your career versus to tank it. So sales is a very stressful job and one of the things that makes it so stressful is that it's very result driven and the results uh, you know, they don't keep going if you don't keep going and you can't really slack off or hide in sales because it's going to reflect itself in your numbers, which is one of the things why I think sales is one of the most beautiful things in the world, right? You can't bullshit your way into, you know, pretending you're successful. Everybody knows what the revenue numbers are that you brought in, you know, and you can compare and compete with others very directly. Very objectively, it's the beautiful thing about it, but it's also the stressful thing about it, right? And usually the people that are attracted to sales positions are people that are ambitious, people that are competitive. And hence, a lot of times, most salespeople will get themselves in situations where they feel an immense amount of pressure and stress because the entire company and organization depends on them to drive certain revenue and goal numbers so the business grows and if they miss their numbers the entire business knows about it and will suffer from it uh, but also they know about it and they can't hide from it and it affects a lot of times your you know income and your income will affect your family and your future plans and it is stressful. Your actions have very, very far-reaching consequences and the feedback loop is very, very tight. Hence, why I believe that sales is one of the most stressful jobs there is. Now, in today's video, I want to share some best practices on how to deal with that stress. What do you do when you just missed a quarter? You missed your quota. You missed your revenue goals, your sales goals. How do you deal with that? Well, first, let me uh, share, you know, a, a, a nice little quote and then a nice little story. I saw this T-shirt somewhere, uh, somebody wearing this T-shirt uh, one day outside, and it was saying, stress just means that you give a fuck, right? Or another way, like, uh, stress, stress just means you give a fuck. I think that was really it, what was on the T-shirt. And I saw that I had to smile because it... It, is, it puts a positive spin on stress. A lot of times when we think about stress, it's negative. But uh, I, I like that perspective. I like shining that light on it and telling yourself, you know what? That stress that you feel, that means that you are a caring person. You give a fuck. You just care a lot. And that's good. That is a good thing. It's good that you care. It's good that you feel something. Now, it is not great what you feel, but it's good that you feel something. And today I'm going to teach you how to turn that feeling and channel it into something that will propel you forward. All right, so the whole goal of managing stress is really getting better in managing your own emotions. Warren Buffett famously said the number one trait he looks in a CEO before he invests in a company is emotional stability. Right? Is there somebody that has stability in their emotional household? Can they manage their emotions? The better you are able, the more capable you are in recognizing, realizing, and managing your own emotions, the more in control of your mind and of your time and of your energy you are, the more impactful you're going to be, especially in times of crisis. And the higher you go, the more crisis you're going to have to endure and deal with. So, I'm going to start with some very generic things that you can do in order to gain more control and keep more balance within your emotional household. And these are generically true. This is not just for salespeople. We'll go from generic to very specific. There's some generic things and you may or may not like them. You may not, you know, they may or may not sound sexy to you. It's nothing new, but it's those basics. It's those basic principles that you've heard a million times before that work. And if you don't incorporate them in your life, it's your loss. So if you want to deal with your stress, you want to make sure that you sleep enough, right? Are you sleeping five hours or four hours a day? Do you pretend to work longer hours and you're still in the office at like 11 or p.m. or midnight, but you really are not really that productive during that time? Stop that crap. Uh, go home. Uh, don't watch television till 1 or 2 or 3 a.m. Don't, don't pollute your mind. Don't keep yourself busy, occupied to not have to confront your issues, go to sleep early, get your seven, eight, nine hours of sleep, whatever it is, and make sure that you're rested. You need your energy, so you need rest. Make sure that you have good sleep habits. Make sure that you eat 
healthy and eat well. I don't know what that means for you, but there's certain things you eat and afterwards you feel like shit and afterwards you feel like you have less energy, you need a nap, you're slower, you're just tired. Whatever that is, take that off your diet for now uh, and make sure that you eat the kind of things that after you've eaten them, either you feel more energy or at least you don't feel slowed down, right? Uh, We all know what that potentially means. But eating well, sleeping well um, can make a big difference. And then the third component that everybody knows is, you know, making sure that you're physically active. Again, I don't really care what it is. You might go to the gym and do weightlifting. You might do martial arts. You might be running. You might be doing yoga. I don't really care. Do something that's physical, you know, at least for 30, 40 minutes a day. Do something that makes you get into a sweat. You know, even if for you that means just walking three times around the block, if that gets you into a sweat and that takes you, you know, 20, 30 minutes of your day, beautiful. Just do that. Uh, but do something physical. Again, it will balance out your inner biochemistry in a way that allows you to feel less stress and to deal more and better with the challenges that are in front of you. So eat well, sleep well, work out. Um, on top of that, Make sure to take breaks, you know, just don't, don't show up at work at 6 a.m. and work till like, you know, 1 a.m. in the morning. Don't, don't be extreme. Um, and if you want, if you think uh, that is good, then really step back and analyze every single hour in the day and try to see patterns. What are my most productive hours, my least productive hours? And take these least productive hours and just cut them out and see if you can boost your productivity and your best productive hours even more. And then meditate. Uh, I'm not going to give a whole spiel about it. Uh, there's many places where you can learn more about this, uh, but I'm a huge proponent of it. I meditate every single day, or I try to. There's days where I don't, uh, just to be honest. But meditating, doing something that's spiritual, it might be prayer for you. It might be meditation. It might be you know, sitting at the beach or at the ocean or whatever it is, you know, uh, uh, feeding the ducks in a pond. Like, do something that keeps your mind empty, Uh, and just lets you focus on absorbing your environment, being in the here and now. It can reset the clock, it can reset your brain, it can make a big difference in how you deal and how capable you are of dealing with stress. All right, so these are the very generic things. Now let's finally get to the very specific things for salespeople, right? So what do you do when you miss your quotas and your numbers? Well, first, we wanna, what you want to do is to evaluate why you've missed your numbers. Why did you miss your quota? Why did you miss your goal? What is the root cause of that? And, you know, the the root causes uh, could be multiple. There's typically four things that could be a cause. And obviously, there's many, many more things that that could be be the cause in your specific situation. But a lot of times, um, you know, you want to use the the five why methodology, you know, um, not just asking yourself, why did I miss the goal and taking the first answer? Uh, and it was developed, I think, during Toyota and, and, and kind of um, the, the lean production methodology. And we will link in this video to some good resources on the five whys. But the basic idea is that when you just ask one why, hey, I missed my numbers. Why? And the first answer is, let's say, because I didn't do as many cold calls as I needed to. Let's say that that's the answer. The, the, if you stop there... Um, you might have a reason why you missed it, but you may or may not have the root cause of the issue. If you continue asking why's at least four more times, so you get to five, usually you will get to the root cause. So let's play this through. I missed my numbers. Why did I miss my numbers? Well, I didn't do as many cold calls. Why didn't I do as many cold calls? Well, the reason why I didn't do as many cold calls was that Uh, You know, I was doing my 100 cold calls a day as I planned to do, and I wasn't reaching anybody. Why wasn't I reaching anybody? Well, a lot of the phone numbers I had were just not valid. Why were the phone numbers I had not valid? Why did I have so many phone numbers that, you know, were, were wrong? Because I went to this website to buy 10,000 leads to hit my quarterly goal, and this website had very poor call quality, oh, poor, very poor data quality. Why did I go, why did this place have poor uh, data quality, and why did I have to go to this place in the first place? Well, because the goal I set for myself this quarter, I could not make with the leads that the company gives me. I couldn't think of a better way 
to get there or an easier way to get there than to just go to this website and buy a lot more leads and tell myself that we'll make a lot more cold calls and hopefully that will get me to more sales and get me to hit those goals. So now, we could even go further on this, but now in this example, we went from I haven't made enough calls to really understanding that it's not really a calling call volume issue here. The issue is that I tried to get to a goal that maybe was either unrealistic or at least my path to get to that goal, which was let's just buy this massive amount of phone numbers, was a shortcut that doesn't work. Didn't take into account that a lot of these phone numbers are going to be really low quality or wrong, flat out wrong. Hence, uh, you know, doing this, you know, extra activity will really not be productive at all. So what you want to do is you want to Use the five whys and really boil down to what was the root cause of me missing my goals. And this takes patience. And this is something that you will feel internal resistance towards. But you have to overcome it and you have to push through it to get to it. A lot of times, one of four things are going to be, you know, big parts of your root courses, especially in sales when you miss your numbers. Number one is you set goals that were unrealistic. You set goals that you just can't reach, at least not with the strategy that you put in place to reach those goals. Right? Number two is you didn't take enough action. Or the quality of the action, which is root cause number three, the quality of the action was not there. So your skill or your knowledge or your experience in taking this action was not there. So you were doing all the right things, but you were doing them, executing them poorly or doing them in a wrong way. So you want to make sure you have the right goals. You want to make sure that you do all the the, the, the right activity and you do that activity at the, at the right volume to be able to expect that result. Um, these three things are totally in your control. The goals you set, the game plan you have, the activity and the work you put in, and the quality of the activity that you put in. All that stuff is fully within your control. Now, sometimes you, hit, you will miss your numbers for reasons that are outside your control. And typically, again, to simplify it, it's going to be one of two reasons. Either the market has shifted really dramatically in a way, like, I don't know, you're selling uh, some product to the end consumers and, uh, you know, the, the, the economy has collapsed and people don't buy things anymore, right? It's, a, it's something outside your control. The market has shifted in a dramatic way that was unforeseen and has affected you. That can be one reason, the market uh, the economy, uh, the competition, outside forces, uh, competitors come into your market that you know ha ha has dramatically changed your numbers. That competitor didn't exist before, and now they are there, and they're you know stealing customers away from you or, or competing against you when you didn't have any competition in this space. Um, or it's a company-owned issue. So the company you work for has messed something up. They they got into a PR. Uh, debacle. They, uh, they, you know, they, they, if they sell software, they had a major downtime. There's something bad that your company has done, something that messed up the company, not you personally, that affects your ability to sell effectively and to reach your goals. Um, so these can be outside sources and you want to look for, is, is it one of these two things or is it something, is it one of the four criteria that I truly have power over? And once you analyze and you truly understand the root cause of why you've missed, that alone will ease your stress. Knowledge is power. And when your mind is clouded by a million thoughts, ah, could I have worked more? Maybe I should have done this. Maybe I should have done that. Ah, but the competitors, maybe other people also miss their numbers, but this other guy didn't miss their, his numbers. What should I do? Am I a failure? Am I a success? But I had good months. When you're in that clouded space that doesn't have a resolution, that lacks clarity on what the problem was, why you are where you are, you, number one, can't deal with it, but also number two, it really, it intensifies, it amplifies the emotional stress you feel. The moment you've calmed down and you've identified the root cause and you go, I've analyzed this, I've taken 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes and I've got, went through the discipline it takes to think this through and I've arrived at pinpointing this as the root cause of why I've missed my number, that alone will ease your stress. Because now you know what the problem is. And once you know what the problem is, the solution typically is fairly simple. You know, oh, if this is the root cause, here's the way that I need to change this. And if you don't, you can always go and reach out uh, to other people to hear from them and learn from them what you need to do 
to change it, right? Let's say you've identified a, a root cause, but you're not sure if you're right. Go and ask a mentor, a coworker. Go ask your boss. Go ask your neighbor. Go ask your mom. Uh, talk somebody through your rationale and see if they can challenge it and see if they follow it and if they agree with you. And get outside advice. Maybe if you have agreement on the root cause, but you don't know what the solution is, go and ask for advice. Once you know what the problem is, it's easy to work on. Either you know what to do or you'll have to go out and seek help to learn what to do. But the, you know, there's many things when it comes to seeking help and that, that, that is important. Um, but really, when you feel stressed and when you've missed your numbers, the, the number one thing you cannot do, and this is what most salespeople will do, is they try to either hide, they try to hide themselves from society or from their team, or they try to hide the results from the world. So what they'll do is they will either retreat, um, you know, they'll call in sick, say they don't feel that well, they're not going to show up at the quarterly meeting because they missed their quarterly numbers and they don't want to go through the shameful experience of sharing that with everybody. Um, they are going not to be joining lunches. They're going to be kind of just retreat, doing less small talk, interacting less with people, um, sending less emails, chatting less. They're going to retreat because they feel stressed out and they don't feel like interacting with the world. The other thing, even worse than a lot of salespeople, that a lot of salespeople will do when they are being stressed out is that they are going to try to hide the fact that they missed the numbers. A lot of problems, 90% of all the bullshit in sales comes from salespeople that feel pressure and, and stress, that they're not hitting their numbers and they're trying to find shortcuts that try to fake it until they make it. And the way they do that sometimes is very, very bad. Like they'll, they'll fix the numbers, they'll lie, they will... Um, you know, they will do something that's very unethical uh, to buy themselves a little bit more time. And, and they, they tell themselves, well, I'm going to say the number was this. And then I have a few more months until people realize it. In those months, I'm going to just outperform and nobody will ever know, right? It's that rationale. It's very few people that maliciously lie and go, I'm going to lie and I'm going to lie forever and fuck everybody and I don't care and I will never care. The, these psychopaths exist, but they're not the majority. The majority of people that lie in these situations and hide facts, they bullshit themselves with a story that, that they're going to fix this in the future and nobody's going to find out. Don't be that person. Don't try to hide the fact that you're missing the numbers. Don't look for shortcuts. Some people look for shortcuts. Well, maybe if I uh, push these upsells to some customers that shouldn't really buy this upgraded plan, I'm going to be able to make the number. Maybe if I... Uh, spam this email list that I have that's really good that I've already used once and I spam it a hundred times in the next few weeks. Maybe I get a few more sales in. They try to take some shortcuts. This is not quite as bad as lying, obviously, and cheating, but it's also bad. You're taking these shortcuts and all they, all you do is you're setting yourself up to never get out of this rut. You're destroying your future business uh, for dealing with your current issues, which then sets up fut like future problems already in advance. You're just you're just setting yourself up for failure long term versus dealing with a short term failure in all honesty, dealing with it head first, fixing it, and investing in your career and your success long term. So don't do these things. Don't hide from the failed numbers. You need to own up. You need to publicly declare. You need to suck it up. Then you need to figure out what happened. And then you need to put a plan of attack in place to change that to do better, to do different, to generate different results, right? Tell people I missed my numbers. When you are talking to a prospect that would buy a different plan from you or would do something that they don't need, but because they trust you, they would listen to you and you could get just a little bit more money out of them and make your numbers look better. Be honest to them. Think about your sales career in 20, 30, 40 year time spans and not just for the next quarter or for next Monday's quarterly meeting. That's not going to be what defines your sales career and your career in general in life. The next 10, 20, 30 years, the, 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 the way you've dealt with bad situations, that's going to define you. Um, and so see it as a test to grow. See it as a test to show what the quality of your character is. Don't try to hide or run from it. Um, that's what most salespeople do. 
and it leads them down a path of further failure, further stress, further pain, and further destruction of value to everybody, to the business they're in, to their customers, to their prospects, to their colleagues, to their boss. Don't be that person. Everybody misses numbers in sales. It happens to the best of us. When that happens, it's time to grow. It's an opportunity for us to grow if we take that challenge up front. We need to make sure that during those stressful times, we are setting some foundational ground rules to even allow us to perform at our best. We need to make sure that we don't slack off on our sleep, don't slack off on our uh, food habits, don't slack off on our physical exercises, don't slack off on our, our mental and spiritual exercises. We need to make sure that we don't try to push through that problem by just doing something that doesn't work even more, you know, and working longer and longer hours without being productive at all and creating even more conditions that make it impossible for us to perform at our best. Uh, but at the end of the day, you analyze the root cause of the issue, you communicate honestly what happened, you own up to the failure, you seek help from others around you, and then you seek a little bit of inspiration. You know, meet some people that have crushed. If you've Missed your quarter, look for who crushed it this quarter. Look for who was the best salesperson right now that you know and make them your mentor. Meet with them. Ask them for help. Ask them for feedback. Ask them to coach you. Gain inspiration from them. If you can't find anybody in your environment, go to YouTube and watch videos like this one or buy a book and read a book by somebody good. Look for outside inspiration. But inspiration alone will not do it. But it, it's the you know, it's the last little little ingredient that can make all of this work perfectly for you. All right, so enough thoughts and ideas on how to deal with stressful situations and how to deal with the stress of missing your numbers when you're in sales. There's no easy short-term solution to this. There's no, no like, here's the quick hack. Just do this one little thing and you'll never feel stress. You will feel stress in life. Uh, it's a good thing. It means you're challenged how you deal with that stress, how you manage that stress. That's what's going to define your career and your impact long-term. This is it for me. Uh, make sure to leave some comments if you have experiences you want to share, if you have some tactics that you've used in your own sales career or with your sales team to manage stress better. And make sure to subscribe to blog.close.io two to three times a week. We share highly tactical and practical advice with you.